okay so what we are going to do today is uh, we will see first that what is exactly resistivity we'll try to derive its unit but yesterday we had stopped our lecture on this particular point that wherein we had derived this particular quantity that we had derived this resistance is equals to rho l by a and we also said that rho is nothing but called as resistivity and according to our relation that rho is nothing but a constant value so we are going to understand today that what exactly is resistivity and how it depends on uh, like what is the relationship with resistance so first what we are going to do today is we will be deriving the unit for resistivity to derive the unit we need the actual formula so yesterday we came up with the formula resistance is equals to rho l by a so that we already got yesterday now we, today we are going to use the same formula to derive the unit for rho that is rho this particular symbol resistivity so let me put the units of the remaining ones see we are trying to derive the unit for rho so we are going to put the values of r l and a that is the unit of them so r is nothing but resistance that we measure in ohm so ohm i have written this is length length is measured in meters so i have written meters area is measured in meter square so i have written meter square right now there is one m here on the numerator side there are two m at the denominator side so i can cancel one of them so let me cancel so one m and one m so still one m is remaining in the denominator side now if i take this meter remaining m to the ohm side so it will become multiplied right it is here it is a division so after transferring to the other side it will become multiplied so ohm into m is equals to rho so let me just what i can say rearrange them so resistivity is equals to this multiplication is nothing but this one so that is the unit would be ohm meter how to uh, write it so it, the symbol is this one that is ohm and meter ohm meter so this is how it should be spelled so unit for resistivity is ohm meter very simple okay give me response in chat box have you understood how this derivation has to be taken down all you have to do is use the formula and put the units of all the remaining ones that is length area ohm that's it okay fine no next thing what we are going to do today is we are going to understand the meaning of resistivity okay we are going to understand the meaning of resistivity what exactly it is so first for that we need the formula for resistance so resistance is equals to rho l by a that we already know okay that is not a new concept for us we just want to know what is the meaning of it to find out the meaning of this we need to put the values of l and a as one so we will consider a hypothetical wire in which the wire we have taken is of 1 meter and it has an area of 1 meter square so it's a hypothetical wire so wire length is 1 meter and area is 1 meter square so let me put that value here 1 1 so i have put the value of length and area area i have assumed as 1 meter square and length a uh, value i have assumed is 1 meter so 1 by 1 but there is no meaning for 1 and 1 so i can just calculate them out and what will be remaining resistance is equals to resistivity so resistance is equal to resistivity that is what we are getting after substituting length value and area value as 1 meter and 1 meter square so definitely this we can use for definition so resistivity they are saying resistance and resistivity are same but when they become equal resistance and resistivity they become equal right but when they become equal when we took length as 1 meter and area as 1 meter square so this can be used for definition so how we are going to say from equal to sign it means resistance and resistivity is same so we will write down resistivity is resistance because you can see the relation here resistance is resistivity so resistivity is resistance lekin how we derive this by taking length as 1 meter and area as 1 meter square so that also we need to write down resistivity is resistance but for 1 meter length and 1 meter square area theek hai understood how to write down the definition of resistivity resistivity is resistance that this one but for 1 meter length and 1 meter square area give me response in chat box have you understood from the uh, this derivation how exactly we are supposed to write down the definition for this okay fine 
so do one thing uh, in your notebook can you please write down this particular definition write down this particular derivation that is r is equals to rho l by a keep the values of l and a as 1 1 and take this derivation and write down the definition which is given on the right hand side in your notebook because this is not properly given in the textbook in the exam this kind of question is asked for one marker that please define resistivity and student gets a lot of problem by writing down the definition as it is not available in our textbook so better to have this definition in our notebook okay it will be easy for us to remember resistivity is resistance but for 1 meter length and 1 meter square area very simple to remember once you are done please let me know okay take your time Okay, return chal. So we'll go to the next point. Now we have to compare resistance and resistivity because see both words are same and just now we have seen that resistance is equal to resistivity. The only difference between resistance and resistivity is that resistivity has one meter length and one meter square area, while resistance doesn't have it. Ye one meter length and one meter square area kiska hai resistivity, not of resistance. So we need to take examples to understand the difference between resistance and resistivity. Okay. So for example, what we have taken is two copper wires we have taken, copper wire A, copper wire B. And the length I have mentioned, length for copper wire A is 5 meter, while it is 2 meter for wire B. And area for wire A is 10 meter square, while area of B is 30 meter square. Now, according to your information, give me a response in chat box. Do you agree that both these wires will have different resistance as their length and area is different? As their area and length is different, so hence the uh, resistance will also be different. Okay, fine. So that I will write down. Resistance of A and B, they are not equal because both have different length and area. Okay, but according to our information, when we are comparing resistivity of both of them, both of them, resistivity is not dependent on length and area because just now we have seen that resistivity is like you know we have derived resistivity with the help of that we have taken length of length as one meter and area as one meter square so resistivity doesn't depend on them it doesn't depend on length and area okay it doesn't depend so hence both of these we do not we cannot consider the values of length and area for comparing resistivity for resistance, you can compare for length and area values. But for resistivity, it will be same for a single material. So as both wires are made up of copper, so resistivity would be same for both of them. Resistivity for A and B will remain same. That is the difference. Because it doesn't depend on length and area. It doesn't depend on length and area. So if material is same, resistivity will be same. But what will be different? Resistances. Because it depends on length and area. TK, we will take one more example, but have you understood at least this? Can we move? Have you at least understood this? Okay. So, okay, fine. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, change that copper wire B with iron wire. So I have done what? I have replaced copper wire B with iron wire B. Now, according to our information, resistance will be different. That is by default because both of them are having different length and different areas. So obviously the resistance will be different. But what about resistivity? Resistivity doesn't depend on length and area, but it depends on material no? because wire A is made up of copper, wire B is made up of iron. So resistivity will be different in this case. Initially, it was same. Why? Because copper wires were same. Okay. It was also copper wire, it was also copper wire. So, resistivity of both of them was same. But in this case, in this case, one is copper wire, one is iron wire. So, definitely resistance are different because length and area is different. But resistivity, that will also be different. Why? Because material is changing. I hope the concept is clear. 
between resistance and resistivity through this example. Understood? Give me a response in chat box. Have you understood this example? Okay, good. Now, next thing what we are going to understand is difference between resistance and resistivity in terms of metals and non-metals. Now, for general purposes, see, you do not consider uh, any difference between resistivity and resistance. TK, you do not talk about it. Because see, basically resistivity is nothing but resistance. But for unit length and unit area square. But basically they are same. So that means if we are comparing metals and non-metals with resistance and suppose resistivity. So what we can say is metals have low resistance that we already know. TK, and non-metals have high resistance. That concept we have seen in the, our Ohm's law. Now let us compare the resistivity. As resistivity and resistance are same, matlab, in terms of concept, hai? so that means metal will also have low resistivity. Why low resistivity? Because they have low resistance. Resistivity is nothing but resistance. Huh? So that means if metals have low resistance, they will have low resistivity. And non-metals, they will have high resistance and they will also have high resistivity. Give me response in chat box. Have you understood this? That as resistance and resistivity are same, it will be same for metals and non-metals. Okay. Now, next thing we are going to compare. This is a resistivity table which is given in your textbook. Okay. So we need to discuss some things about this table because in the exam it is frequently asked. So this is the table which is given in your textbook. Now what I want you to do is focus on this one. This table is available on page number 207 of your textbook. Okay? But focus here right now. Focus on the last sentence which is given at the bottom. They are saying you need not memorize these values. You can use these values for solving numerical problems. Okay? So these values of different materials and their resistivity are given. You can see the word written is resistivity. So resistivity of silver, copper, aluminium they have given. And we already know. Unit for resistivity is ohm meter. So all these values are in ohm meter. But they are saying you do not memorize these values. These values are not supposed to be memorized. In the exam, if some numerical is being asked, they will give you the value. For example, they are asking, um, what can you talk about the resistance of nickel and iron if their resistivity are? Question may they give. So they will give you resistivity of nickel. That is 6.84 into 10 to the power 8. So they are not asking you to memorize, so do not memorize. Okay? Now focus on the materials. The materials given here are conductors, alloys and insulators. Conductor means what we have already seen. Conductor means materials which readily allow electricity to pass through them. Such kind of materials are also called by another name that is metals. So metals and conductors are same. right? They allow electricity to flow through them. And you can see examples here of conductors. Iron, silver, copper, we already know these are metals. So they will allow electricity to pass through them. Insulators, these are bad conductors of electricity like glass, ebonite, diamond. Electricity doesn't pass through them. And alloys, they are like, you know, almost like conductors, but because alloys are made up of generally conductors, you already know from your ninth and eighth grade that alloys are generally made up of metals. Okay? So hence, alloys would behave like metals, but as you know, Alloys are made by mixing. Okay? They, are, they are basically mixtures. So if you are making alloys by mixture, so they are basically impure. Something like you had that question in last year that water has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. And if it is impure, then what is going to happen? So it's boiling point change. Why? If the water is impure. In the same way, if conductors become impure, that is alloys, if, if you convert conductors to alloys, they will not behave as metals but they will have a slight change. Okay? They will not conduct perfectly as metals, but they will be as good as metals. Okay? So somewhere in between. So alloys are basically something like conductors only. Now focus on the values. Focus on the values. 10 to the power minus 8. 10 to the power minus 6. Forget about these numbers, the first one. Focus on these. These are called as orders. Okay? For example, tungsten value is given as 5.20 into 10 to the power minus 8. If I'm asking you what is the order of tungsten, so you will say the answer is 10 to the power minus 8. So whatever is the 10th value is nothing but order. And these orders are different for each material. You can see for metals, it is almost 10 to the power minus 8. For metals, it is 10 to the power minus 8. 
for alloys it is 10 to the power minus 6 and for insulators it's a very big value 10 to the power 14 and barabar bhi hai na see if resistivity is resistance so that means it will be a lower value for metals metals will always metals generally have low resistance so that means they will have low resistivity that means their value would be very small okay now you give me response in chat box according to your information if i give you two numbers if i give you two numbers minus 4 and uh, i will give second number as 15 minus 4 and 15 which number is bigger what do you think give me response in chat box according to your information minus 4 and 15 which number is bigger 15 right because it is positive in the same way you if a value is given in terms of 10 to the power minus 8 it basically means resistivity of silver is very much less as compared to glass glass value is given in 10 to the power 14 it is a very high number it's a very big number Matlab, zeros ke baad kitne, man, 10 ke baad kitne zeros hai? 14 zeros are available so it's a very big value glass so that means resistivity of glass is more resistivity of silver is very less in the exam these values will not be asked now but they this will be they they will be asking like what is the basic order so um, i will just highlight it for you in the exam they will ask you uh, metals and alloys they generally have what kind of order of resistivity so it's a very simple one metals and alloys almost have same what i can say resistivity order that is 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter to 10 to the power minus 6 you don't need to write down the first values all you need to do is write down the second one so 10 to the power minus 8 to 10 to the power minus 6 for whom metals and alloys silver iron copper are the examples and nichrome this is one of the examples of what focus on this word nichrome 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 is an alloy we have already seen this word in ohm's law we had used a nichrome wire for testing purposes and why we had used it because if we had used metal so metal would have low resistance then we would not have been able to calculate it so we took nichrome because nichrome has higher resistance as compared to metals that is one of the reasons why for ohm's law we had taken nichrome wire okay now the second example insulators insulators have high resistivity that we already know and that range is how much 10 to the power 12 to 10 to the power 17 examples be rubber and glass so in the exam you just need to remember these values for metals and alloys it is 10 to the power minus 8 to 10 to the power minus 6 and for insulators 10 to the power plus 12 to 10 to the power 17 that's it fine okay understood till this moment can we move forward give me response okay fine now what we are going to do is we are going to talk about the relation between resistance and temperature yesterday we have seen relationship between resistance and length resistance and area but we have not seen relation between resistance and temperature that we will discuss today okay so uh, suppose we are taking the same picture that atoms are present and suppose this is one of the electrons which wants to move from this side to right hand side it is moving suppose let's say and each time that path was stopped because of atom that we already know this concept is called as resistance right now just imagine uh, give me response in chat box if we increase the heat of this material if we increase the heat atoms will vibrate at greater speed or smaller speed what do you think if we increase the temperature of this material will the atoms vibrate at greater speed or smaller speed they will right right yes your answers are very much correct these atoms will vibrate at a greater speed if heat is supplied to them and just imagine this electron is trying to move in a very quiet fashion it just wants to go from this part to this part but these atoms are dancing like right? why they are dancing because we gave them energy so they are energized they are moving everywhere so obviously they are going to what i can say collide with whom electron so every atom is colliding with electron an electron is again not able to complete its path so that means when we increase the temperature atoms will provide more resistance why because they are getting energized and they are going everywhere in that material so do you agree that by increasing temperature we are basically increasing the energy of the atoms they are moving at a greater speed and hence speed of electron is getting less okay so electron is not able to move at a faster pace because of the speed of atoms 
understood give me response in chat box have you understood what is basically happening with temperature if you increase temperature atom speed will increase electron speed will decrease because atoms are moving everywhere sab taraf ghum rahe ho okay good so what relation we have brought or understood from this uh, particular uh, what i can say image is that resistance is directly proportional to temperature so that means if you increase temperature resistance will also increase that is the third thing we want to know today resistance increases if temperature increase theek hai now focus on ohms law now we want to know i told you in ohms law the relation was that potential difference is directly proportional to current and that time i told you that please just remember the last thing and we will discuss that thing later so the last part i have highlighted for you in the ohms law it was said to maintain the temperature temperature remains constant only then potential difference and current will remain same theek hai now why it was said by ohm that temperature should remain same is because of this factor because if temperature change resistance change and if resistance change current will change let us follow this path again if temperature change resistance will change and then current will change and if that thing happens we cannot test our law so what ohm said is please maintain the temperature while you are testing my law because if your temperature changes current will change and potential difference will also change okay so give me response in chat box have you understood that why ohm had asked us to keep the temperature constant why not to change the temperature during testing of his law because temperature and resistance they are dependent on each other they are directly proportional okay so that thing you also understood so let us uh, accumulate whatever we have understood about resistance so resistance depends on length resistance depends on area temperature so let us see resistance depends on length that we have seen it is directly proportional area indirectly proportional that we also see temperature just before sometime we have seen that temperature is directly proportional now the fourth point nature of material now it depends on this also we will discuss this see nature of material matlab uska swabhav ki baat nahi kar rahe hum log nature of material means what we are talking about what kind of material you are using that means in shorter terms we are talking about whether that material is a conductor or insulator or alloy that is what basically we mean by nature so nature doesn't mean like actual nature like whether it's a good nature or bad nature like you swabhav kaise hai not that one we are discussing about what whether it's a conductor insulator or alloy that is the fourth point so give me response in chat box have you understood all these factors because in the exam they'll be asking ki give me the list of you know the factors on which resistance depends Okay, so let us move forward. 